In 1996, a young girl named Matilda was born in a hospital, and the nurse then gives the baby to her grumpy father. The narrator tells us about her parents, Harry and Zinnia. The family is very strange. Even they forget Matilda in the truck when they get home. Matilda and her older brother Michael grew up with them like this, receiving spared attention from them. But Matilda grows up and takes care of herself. Meanwhile, she knows how to do almost everything for herself. Her brother Michael should go off to school, and her father would go off to work where he sells used cars for an unfair price. Her mother would go off to play bingo, and Matilda was always left alone. Matilda starts growing more, and before the age of four, she manages to make pancakes alone. When Matilda is four years old, she asks her father for a book, but he says she doesn't need it because she is young to reading, and the kid understood that she'd have to get whatever she wanted by herself. When everyone has gone out, Matilda leaves for the library. Matilda continues going there for many weeks and finishes the books in the children's section. Even she moves to the other parts of the library. She caught the attention of the librarian who then advised her to get a library card so that she can take as many books as she wants. And Matilda continues like that for for two more years. Her father Harry walks in on her reading one day and asks her where the books are from. Matilda says they're from the library, but he doesn't believe her. She then tells him she wants to start the school. He refuses and says she's still four. But Matilda insists that she is six and a half years old. Harry drags Matilda to her mother Zinnia and asks for her age again. Zinnia says she's four, but Matilda says she is six and old enough to start school. Harry sends her away, as she's still underaged. Michael throws snacks on her way back to her room, calling her shitface. Matilda starts crying, as she wants a friend like the people she reads about. The next day, Harry enters the house, saying he's great and awesome. Zinnia asks if they sold the car, and Harry says yes. Harry tells Michael that he'd have to learn about the family business very soon and start making his own money. He makes Michael sit with a pen and paper and starts telling him how he sold cars. He tells Michael the amount he bought the cars for and the amount he sold them. When he asks for the total of his profits, Matilda responds first. Although her answer is right, Harry gets upset and tells her a bad person should be punished. He takes Matilda away and locks her up in her room. Harry's words plant an idea in her head and she plans to punish her parents when they're bad. Matilda wakes up early before everyone else and replaces Harry's hair oil with hydrogen peroxide. Harry applies the potion to his hair and informs Michael he'll be going to the shop with him. Michael and Zinnia notice his hair and inform him about it, while Harry is shocked to find his hair bleached. Meanwhile, the FBI is tailing Harry and his family because he buys stolen car parts. At his junk shop, Harry demonstrates his way of refurbishing a car for sale. What he does is fraudulent, and Matilda disagrees with what he is doing. But when Matilda insists that people need good cars, Harry emphasizes their differences. And he thinks that because he is older, he is smarter. Zinnia arrives at that moment, and announces that she won the games. She invites them all out, and Matilda hands Harry his hat that she lined with superglue. When they arrive, Harry tries to put off the hat. But he failed and makes some chaos, while Matilda is eating happily. After Zinnia helps him get it off at home, they sit and watch TV. When Matilda refuses to watch, Harry tears up the book. But Matilda stares hard at the TV furious, until it blows up. And she makes sure that she has a superpower. The next day, Harry sells a car to a school owner, who thinks all children are mistakes. When he gets home, Harry tells Matilda that she would be going to school. And she is overjoyed. She gets to Crunchy Hall the next day, and is not discouraged by the old building. Matilda is happy to be in the midst of other kids. However, her principal is a mean woman who likes to put kids in the chokey, or throw them out the window. Matilda's class teacher is a nice woman named Miss Honey. She makes Matilda comfortable in the class, and she doesn't scold Matilda when she solves large multiplications although it is her first day. Miss Honey tries to convince the headmistress to let Matilda into an older class, but the older woman misinterprets it as Miss Honey's laziness, because Matilda makes many problems, and she threatens to put Matilda in the chokey if Miss Honey doesn't take care of her. Later that day, Miss Honey visits Matilda, and tries to talk to her parents about their daughter's brightness, but they are more interested in TV, so Miss Honey leaves a book behind for 
for Matilda. In the morning, all the kids are called to the assembly hall. They sit and watch a kid called Bruce is getting punished. The principal places a giant cake in front of Bruce and commands him to eat it all, and tells everyone that Bruce stole her cake. When Bruce feels like giving up, Matilda and the students start cheering for him. And thanks to their cheers, Bruce finishes the cake. But the principal is upset, and she breaks the tray on Bruce's head. The principal punishes all students to sit in the school for extra hours because their cheers. Matilda gets home very late at night and tells her dad that the principal kept them until late hours, but he doesn't believe her. She also tells him that the cops are watching the house, but Harry doesn't believe her too. The next day, Matilda is with her friends, and the principal suddenly shows up. She drags Matilda to the chokey, saying she and her father duped her, and it seems the car she bought from Harry didn't live up to expectations. She locks Matilda in there, and goes to see the classes. Miss Honey tells the kids to hide away everything colorful, and instructs a girl named Lavender to get water in a jug for the principal. Lavender is Matilda's best friend, and she saw when the principal took Matilda away. So, she empties a jar with a reptile into the jar of water, to punish the principal. The principal then addresses the kids, and says her ideal school is the one where are no kids. Meanwhile, Miss Honey finds out that Matilda is in the chokey, and goes to let her free. The principal asks a kid if she knows how to spell. The kid recites a spelling poem, which Miss Honey taught them. But the poem annoys the principal, and she scolds Miss Honey. The headmaster drinks from the jar, and notices the kids laughing at her. She asks them to spill what's so funny, but they continue laughing. The principal then notices the reptile, and asks for the person who did it. Before she can ask for the culprit, Matilda puts her hand up and says that it isn't a snake. But the principal takes it, that Matilda is guilty, and asks if she did it to get back at her. Matilda tries to defend herself, but the principal insists that Matilda is at fault, and promises to deal with her. She starts talking about Harry, and how he's a cheat. But Matilda stares hard at the glass of water, and the cup suddenly tilts, and the reptile jumps on the principal. When the principal is able to get the animal off her body, she accuses Matilda of doing it. But Miss Honey asks how Matilda could have done anything, if she was sitting in the chokey all the time. The principal says she'll watch every one of them in the class, especially Matilda. As the kids leave the class, Matilda stays back to tell Miss Honey that she did tip the glass over earlier on. Miss Honey doesn't believe her, so Matilda tries to show her but the trick doesn't work. And she then invites Matilda to her house. They walk by the principal's house. And Miss Honey tells Matilda the story of the girl who used to live there. The girl lost her mother at a young age so her father brought in the principal to care for the girl. However, the principal was a wicked woman. Soon the girl's father died, leaving her in the care of the principal. And the girl had to manage on her own until she moved out to a cottage. Miss Honey then tells Matilda that she was born into a family that didn't appreciate her. Matilda notices that Miss Honey lives in a cottage and realizes that she is the little girl from the story. The girl then asks her why she hasn't run away. But Miss Honey replies that she can't leave her kids behind. After a while, they watch the principal and discover she's scared of cats. Matilda sneaks into the house after the principal leaves. As they look around, the principal successfully turns the car around back to the house since it stopped working midway. Matilda and Miss Honey snap out of their exploration when they hear the principal's voice downstairs. The principal notices that someone had been at her house and starts looking for them. She almost gets Matilda, but Miss Honey distracts her. They are lucky to get out. And Miss Honey makes Matilda promise that she would never set foot in this house again. Matilda gets home to see that her mother is entertaining the cops. Zinnia thinks they are dealers in the speedboats. Matilda makes Harry yell at her so that she can access her inner powers. She starts practicing and soon she controls things with her mind. Matilda catches the cops sneaking into their garage without a warrant and distracts them. She uses her powers to move their car, a way of buying her father more time. And the cops rush after their car. Matilda needs to take care of the principal, so she sneaks into her house at night, climbs up the roof closest to the room, 
where Miss Honey's doll is in, and uses binoculars to control the doll out of the room with her eyes. This isn't enough for Matilda, so she plays more tricks on the principal, and it scares her. Matilda replaces the principal's portrait with Miss Honey's father's one, and she makes the clock strike the hour clock three times. She also steals two chocolate wraps from the chocolate box with her powers. The principal gets very scared and runs out of the house. Matilda runs away, leaving behind a ribbon. The principal sees the ribbon while she's struggling with her car. She sniffs it and makes sure that Matilda is behind all that. Matilda returns the doll to Miss Honey and shows off her powers to the teacher. Meanwhile, the principal tells Miss Honey that she would be teaching the class today. Matilda prepares the class for the principal with her powers, and hides everything. The principal comes and bullies them again, but Matilda uses her powers to write on the board, as if it was Honey's father's spirit. She does more tricks and scares the principal away from the school and the house for good. Miss Honey moves back into her house, and Matilda visited her often. During one of her visits, Zinnia shows up and announces they're leaving the city. But Matilda doesn't want to go, and she convinces them to sign her adoption papers instead, so that Miss Honey becomes her legal guardian. Zinnia says she never understood Matilda for one day, so she's happy to let her go, and they get away with their crime. Miss Honey becomes the principal, and she starts a new life with Matilda. Thanks for watching, take care, and see you in the next video. All this money